Blood Curse, Season 1, Episode 9, Thoughts. This episode is called The Source. Another episode I love. Spoilers for these first nine episodes. And, yeah, really appreciate where we're really getting close to a full conclusion. You know, by the end of this episode, we have pretty much the entire backstory. And, yeah, I could absolutely see how they could completely wrap up the entire season storyline in the next episode, which is the last of the season. So, yeah, let's dive right in. So, yeah, we pretty quickly get some payoff to the, you know, last episode ended with Wallan's brother. The, the you know, clearly there's, like, bugs under his skin, which we know to be a very bad sign. And now, um, Mr. Harna, you know, cuts it open and... You know, he does explain this is only a temporary fix, you know. I wish the slugs coming out of the wound looked more convincing. I don't blame them for not... Like, I, it would have been extremely difficult to get the same effect if they tried to simply... Um, if they tried to do it with practical effects. <clears throat> And we see Harna remove a knot from inside Wulan's brother, and then explain this is actually not enough. The which, yeah, I mean, we saw how powerful this shaman is in in the earlier episode, you know. So yeah, I one hundred percent believe him. They did a really good job, at, like raising the stakes with that, you know, making it seem. Like, it, it was always fairly persistent, and we, you know, the show pretty much opens, the very first episode opens, with Mr. Bond and, you know, yeah, stabbing himself over the, the so, you know, we knew it was pretty extreme, but once the shaman was shown and, you know, killed Reno and, and injured Harna, yeah, that really took it to a new level. And I quite appreciate, you know, with horror, the longer the story goes, you kind of have to increase the intensity or it's just going to, you know, eventually run out of steam. And that's, you know, they want people to watch all ten episodes, so they have to do that over the course. And... Let's see... Then we have the, yeah, <clears throat> back in 1998, we see the, the guy trying to, to blackmail, and the, let's see, yeah, you know, and the, the we have that thing of, you know, um, I think it's it's Bondin who says, if we start paying him now, we'll never. Let's see. I th yeah, I think we, you know we'll we'll have to keep paying him. He'll he'll keep asking for money, something like that. And in this episode, you really do see this criticism of, like I feel like so many problems on the show would have been avoided. I'm I'm talking for for the characters. I'm not saying bad things about the show so so many of the characters would have been so much better off if they didn't struggle so much to make a living and these are people who work you know often in in western media when you see someone say oh you know it'll, it'll often be this person doesn't work you know may, maybe they don't want to maybe they're disabled or something no wonder they, they can't get by. But here, no. You know, clearly they do. They work. They're, they're willing to work. They're not asking to not have to work. But they, they, they need at least a little bit more money to take care of their family. You know, I'm, I'm terrible with names. I swear it's not. I'm, I mean no disrespect. But, the, you know, the driver and uh, Rito... 
and and yeah, um, uh, Wulan's father. You know, all of them make decisions that end up going really badly, end up hurting people because the this pressure of of money. You know, so it feels like a very well-crafted criticism of, of capitalism. Uh, love to see it. But, but yeah, you know, they, yeah, they, they go to the decision to, to use violence to resolve the, you know, blackmailing. And, yeah, Rito at first says no, but they point out, you know, if, if you do this, you'll get paid enough, you can marry, you know, that, that woman, uh, that, that, you know, and... It's it's such a great. I love that we only see this after we already know how that went, because yeah, he married her. Uh, I, f I feel like we were told that they were happy together. They had Atik together, but he ended up dead because specifically because he did this. You know, <clears throat> like he didn't get hit by a truck after that. No, this was this was a dis direct result. And, <clears throat> let's see, um, yeah, and, and, yeah, Wulan's father was worried about losing the company, he didn't lose the company, but he died, his wife died, and now his son is dying, you know, so it is, you know, yeah, adoptive son, whatever, it's, you know. He treats him like he's his own son. Um, but, but yeah, the... Or wait, was... No, I feel like we were told that he was already born when the two met. Um, yeah, I love how creepy Gatot's house is. You know, you have all these, you know, it's, it's afterwards, it's explained, oh, they're, they're spells, you know, and he leaves out offerings and all this stuff. But just, yeah, like, you could easily see how, you know, they could have just you know, gotten out of the car, knocked, door opens, come on in, you know. But no, there's this, you know, they're looking around, are we sure this is the place? And, you know, look at all these things, okay, uh, knock. You know, and at first he doesn't want anything to do with them. But, you know, and I really, I love the fact that, you know, Essa is like, I mean, we came all this way, you sure don't want to, you know, and Wulan is like, my father was Mr. Armad, you know, and Essa's like, good thinking, my father was Mr. Bondin, you know, at this point, okay, fair enough, you know, if Gatat doesn't let them in and, and talk to them, he would be just the biggest jerk in the just in in the known multiverse you know just you know because there's no way he doesn't know that that they're dead the you know so so or at the very least he can deduce that they've been attacked you know if he's been attacked certainly they have been too and the fact that you know yeah and actually you know when he lets them in he asks, why did they send you? And they explain, you know, they, they died because of the curse. And, you know, yeah, he, they, they ask him to explain, and he says, are you sure you want to hear the story? And I'm like, I mean, as long as you don't spend several episodes kind of spinning your wheels, I would love to hear it, you know. And, yeah, we we see the, the attack on... Um, the the driver and you know yeah he's accused of of shamanism and you know he's he's trying to protect his wife the the you know it's it's a just devastating scene like you know we we really it's it's punishing to watch and yeah it's exactly the right way to to handle it you know this is very much like there's no Wulan's father and Mr. Bonin are not innocent, you know, and, and we even have, you know, they, they, they knew that it was going to get violent, now that it has, you know, they're having second thoughts, but it still goes really badly, you know, and this is, 
you know, we see stories with that kind of moral across many different cultures because the thing is, like, the lizard brain likes the idea, you know, I mean, they they hurt, you know, maybe maybe they didn't hurt us physically, but they hurt our feelings, they, they hurt our ego, maybe they hurt our standing within the group, you know, we should use violence against them, and, you know, psychologically speaking, it, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to directly quote Harley Quinn here from Birds of Prey, one of my favorite movies, uh, revenge rarely brings about the catharsis that we seek, you know, so, and, and for a lot of people, they do end up realizing that, but sadly, many, many times, it's too late, you know, once they, once they come to realize it, and I, I love that the, yeah, you know, they, they weren't really intending to kill the driver, but you know, one of them like slams up against this this glass thing, and I love that it's it gets to breathe. It doesn't immediately like big explosion of violence. It's just we get reaction shots, and everyone's like, "Oh no, oh no!" You know, and he's got the he pulls out the thing, and there's some blood, and he collapses. You know, just the the um, there's so much pressure today for for media to move really really fast. There there's this. You know this this fear that oh you know people will people will stop watching, and will never get the you know audience retention. That's a big it's a huge priority. The fact that they let it breathe means that they knew this is gonna work. Like no one's gonna be like, oh, what what next? You know no everyone's like, oh no that's you know, and and it's not like, yeah. So so really really nicely handled. Um. And and yeah, one of the things that just destroyed me was was when the the kid is being threatened, and you know the the driver tries to to fight to to protect him, and that's actually what leads to you know that's the that's what sets off the uh, was it Gatot who killed? And I think it might have been, but it went by. I'm I'm also bad with faces. Um, but but yeah, the the. Um, you know, I I really appreciate this this escalation over the course of the scene, and you know, Bondon says, you know, what's done is done. Now we have to make sure we leave no trace. So you know, they they take out the wife also. <clears throat> Just yeah, really, really. I I appreciate that. You know, a, a horror story that is willing to get you to empathize, at least somewhat, with, you know, the the antagonist. I I really appreciate that's it. It can make it. It it doesn't need to always be the case, but it can make it really really effective. And yeah, he explains about the spells and offerings. And Wulan, of course, doesn't believe in, and neither does Essa. They're, they're convinced, you know, our parents could never have done this. And, yeah, we see Wulan's brother still really suffering. And Wulan and Essa have a shower together. And... Yeah, the ending of the episode is very effective. You know, it, at this point, we kind of know there's a pretty decent chance someone's going to die by the end of the episode. You know, I, there's not a huge amount of episodes that don't have at least one character die over the course of it. And it makes a lot of sense for it to be Gatot. He's, he's you know, uh, disseminated a lot of the, the information that really needed to to come from him yeah he's he was the only person left wasn't he who could even tell cuz bonden ahmad rido are dead i think we were told that the the third attacker also died i think Gatot told rido that in an earlier episode so so you know this is the only way that the truth would be revealed to them <coughs> but yeah you know he, you know the uh, Gatot hears this 
the voice of his daughter. And that's something, you know, again, across a lot of different mythologies and cultures, you have this idea that sometimes something evil will lure you in with a, a face or a voice or something. Maybe it's something you know, maybe it's just something that you find attractive, you know, in, in a lot of stories it's like a beautiful young woman or something. And, you know, if we wanted to be completely skeptical, a lot of the times it's probably just, you know, the person who perceived this, you know, it's it's like their their mind trying to to cope with the fact that they can't be with this you know, individual or, or group and and you know, yeah, sometimes the mind plays tricks if you're in an extreme enough situation. But yeah, it um, you know, here it is very clearly the the shaman doing it. And yeah, you know, it's it is very clever. That is of course going to, you know, and, and I love Again, I love the gravity of the, you know, there's this shot as he's leaving the house that's just like, that was, that was a mistake. He shouldn't have done that. He is no longer protected. Because that's the thing, you know, the shaman has been trying to kill him. What did he say? For a month now, you know, and he's still, you know, he's dealing with this, like, there's, there's these... I guess it's also slugs for him, like like Wulan's brother, you know, under under his skin. But the shaman has not quite been able to kill him, you know. And yeah, I guess it was probably because you know, obviously, there's like, why didn't the shaman do this like yesterday? You know, why did she wait until just now? I think it's the fact that as he was telling the story, Gatot specifically told Wulan and Essa. You know, I can't see my daughter anymore. I can't see my wife anymore. So that brought it to, you know, he's he's thinking about them, in a in a you know, yeah. It it just so so that brought it to the the forefront of his mind, and the shaman was able to take advantage of that. And yeah, you know, he gets some steps out, and the door slams, which. At first I thought it was like supernatural, but then when he goes back to the door, he gets stabbed from in there, so I guess it's possible that it was just her standing in there, and she was like, you know what, I'm going to give you and the hallucination some privacy. This is not something that I need to see. But seriously though, very effective. Like, the, the door slam, it's, it's, it's the easiest thing. Like, it's, but, but yeah. It's super effective, you know. Like I once made a, a horror short film, and I had a door slam because it's very easy to set up, but it's very effective, especially if you can't see. And that was also how I did it. If you can't see what's slamming the door, if it seems like it's supernatural, that's really, you know, the the there's just something about. I guess maybe it's the fact that you're not safe indoors. Or the, yeah, the, uh, in this case, it's not indoors. You're not safe even though you're near a building. You know, because, like, back before we could make buildings, it was difficult to find safety anywhere, but then we were able to build buildings, and that provides a lot of protection from elements, from animals, you know, from, from nosy shamans. What if the building isn't safe anymore, you know? So, yeah. And that's also, you know, there's something in a lot of, we didn't see that here, but there's a lot of horror stories where, you know, I, I just watched uh, uh, The Boogeyman, the 2023 movie, uh, Sunday, so day before yesterday, that one uses creaking a lot, you know, because again, that's the, because th when we hear wood creaking in a, in a building, like immediately we think you got to get out of there because it's going to collapse. You know, the building might fall onto you, you know. So it's it's stuff like that. It's it's undermining the perceived safety that can be really really effective. And yeah, we close on the the shaman stabbing him like 10 times in the span of a couple of seconds, like, holy crap. 
I think she might want this guy dead. I don't think she's the founder of his fan club. And yeah, the the um yeah, this this of course means that the shaman has almost carried out her mission, you know. Um if I had to guess, I think that it's going to... I, I don't think they're going to let evil win, but maybe. Um, but if I had to guess, and yes, I know the final episode has already aired. It's just that I haven't watched it yet. But I'm guessing they're going to discover what's left of the backstory. They're going to they're gonna get to where the shaman is, which, you know, Harna says he knows. You know, they just wanted to <clears throat> visit Gatot first. Um, yeah, you know, they're going to go to where the shaman is. They're going to, you know, there's going to be a, a shaman on shaman fight or something. And by the end of the episode, <clears throat> the shaman will be dead. And there'll be some kind of sign that it's over, you know, everything has been resolved. That that would be my guess, based on how the the show has been up to this point. But I'm totally down for a downer ending. That would also be very cool. It just feels like a lot of... I, I, if the show was much shorter, I would... I, I might have more... I might believe more that it's going to end on a downer but, you know, ten episodes and then a downer ending after all this investigation and such. I, I, I'm guessing that it's going to be a, a happy ending. Like in the shower. But the, 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 between Wulan and Essa, I mean. Anyway, the, the, um, I think... That is all that I have. But but yeah, you know the so the yeah the ending here right right yes, Wulan's brother is also being attacked, and if they don't manage to stop the shaman, you know he's going to die. We we've seen this you know happen several times before. The shaman would probably also then attack Wulan and possibly also Essa. I could see that, and maybe resume attacks of of Harna. But, yeah, so, so, yeah, the ending, you know, tells us, yeah, you know, the, the, you know, Wulan and Essa are getting closer to being able to stop the shaman, but she is not out for the count yet. She is not some helpless, you know, the, it's going to be very difficult for them to stop her, so, uh, yes, I should be able to do next episode probably six days from now yeah Monday of next week and since that is the the finale of this first season and I'm not really seeing any evidence that there's going to be more than one season I will also do the review maybe Monday certainly sometime next um yeah sometime next week i can imagine it's wow i just i mean i think i read these earlier already but someone said one of the imdb user reviews said you know, the, yeah, the the actual title is a lot like typical Italian mafia dramas, and then someone else wrote, you know, their their one line summaries nothing like an Italian mafia movie, and and the first line is, I am only writing this review because right now the only posted the only review posted is so wrong. <laughs>